Hello everyone and welcome back to Cowabunga Corner. In this episode we are talking about the third issue of the TMNT magazine. Yes, I'm going to try and get one issue in per season till we're all done. So in this issue we have a handful of fun things that happened. It came out in winter of 1991. So we're in between Turtle Films. We are at the point where we have the cartoon going extremely strong. And the Mirage crew is right in the center of the mix. So, of course, another wonderful cover by Michael Dooney here. As you can see, mine's been autographed up. We have Kevin Eastman, Steve Levine, Michael Dooney, Dan Berger, and um, Eric Tubbo. We just got a lot of stuff right here that is worth reading. I've always encouraged the magazines, if you can find them on eBay or something, because these magazines have so much in them for the fans. It's a shame that we don't have a magazine going right now. At least we have the internet where you can find the information about these wonderful things that was provided to us before the internet came around updating us daily. Here we have inside two pages for letter pages. Now their letter pages don't have much. It's small like little kid letters in a circle and they would have two which turtle, the letter from the kid, and then they will have a bold area where it is the turtle replying. Like one of them in here asks Michelangelo how he became cool. And he gives his reply, which is a little bit there. But it's just cool to see that they had this area where the kids could communicate with somebody who's willing to be the turtles for them. And it's an official book. So any reply here, you know, was officially taken as an actual reply to the fan that wrote. Now, they have their area in here for advertisements. In fact, one of the things brought up is Christmas is coming up, and if you don't know what to ask for Christmas, well, how about a Ninja Turtle sweater? So, yeah, they have some Ninja Turtle sweaters and tote bags, even a pop-up book kind of advertised in one of their write-up areas. But then they also go into some cool rides. Uh, there's, like, some ship-type things. Uh, one's like a shuttle, but it's more like a boat, maybe. <laughs> it's... It's long and narrow and colorful. And then there's like this plane. But, you know, they, they got something there for people to enjoy. The comic in this issue is kind of fun. And it's short, but it's fun. You have the turtles going to meet up with Splinter. They're getting ready for lunch. Splinter's supposed to drink, bring the drinks, the soda and juice. And the turtles are bringing the pizza. But they get there and Splinter's not at the location. So they have to find Splinter. And when they find him, he's tied up to a bell in a bell tower. And there's this mutant owl that attacks them. And they cry out that he's their sensei during the battle. And the owl's like, sensei? <laughs> no, he's just a rodent to be eaten. <laughs> so there's this uh, story where the owl's trying to eat Splinter. And if you want to find out how Splinter survives, find this magazine. Because... He does, of course, survive, and the owl finds something new and tasty to eat. <laughs> but what I like most in this specific issue of the magazine is closer to the back, and that is an interview with Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. For me, this was one of the earliest interviews I've ever read with them. So I'm going through this interview excited as I'm reading these little tidbits. Who's their favorite turtles? How did they create the turtles? What is Turtles 2 going to be about? But what I liked most in this interview is that this is the magazine. This is the picture that first showed me Kevin Eastman's very first original drawing of the Ninja Turtles. Which makes this an excellent... <laughs> And I do mean excellent topic for today's episode, since this is episode 83, and the Ninja Turtles was created on November 19th, 1983. So in this one issue, we have Kevin Eastman's first drawing of the Ninja Turtles inside this little green blob right here. And it looks so different. Yeah, this turtle's standing upright with Chuck, but he looks more like a normal 
turtle with a ninja outfit. He doesn't look like what we know as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So we have this fantastic interview with Eastman and Laird, and for me, that was just so thrilling to get the chance to read, to find out how they got into it, to find out where they came from, and just to see that drawing, because I would have never predicted that these guys was created from that one little drawing. And that made this magazine stand out to me for the longest time. My original copy of this magazine has no cover. as The pages are torn out and put inside another folder, which I carry around that has a bunch of interviews. Because that interview just was one of those extremely rare and exciting things for me to find. I don't know about you guys, but... That's one of my favorite things to read from back then was the interviews. Of course, this magazine has the other things that we are coming to expect out of the magazines, including the pull-out poster. This time, it's a pull-out poster of Michelangelo with a skateboard. Yes, that was hanging up in my room for many, many years, as that poster is completely worn and bantered. Not that one in here, but the one from the Torn Up magazine, as I love Michael Dooney's artwork. His work has always caught the turtles' expressions, has always caught the feel of the turtles, and to me, it's one of the best type of designs for the turtles. I love his original 1990s, early 90s artwork of the turtles. It was really good stuff. And that's one of the things that made this magazine great was you had everyone working on it. Let's go back to the comic book for a second and talk about how much of the Mirage guys was involved in this story where the turtles fought the mutant owl. You have Ryan Brown and Dean Claren on plot and script. Then your pencil work is done by Jim Lawson the inking by Dan Berger, and the color by Mark Martin. These are people who've worked on other Ninja Turtle areas, and most of which worked right inside Mirage Studios. These are names that Turtle fans know from the Archie comics, the Mirage comics. They are out there. If you look on the back of toys, you'll find toys designed by these names. These are the people that made the Ninja Turtles what they were back in the 1990s. And here they are, taking their time out of everything else they're doing and putting together this magazine, which is why we focus a lot on it. Of course, there's also a splinter tale in here. It's a contest one showing more lessons for the turtles to learn. And we have a bunch of other little odds and ends advertisements. One of my favorite advertisements inside this issue is for the soundtrack of Ninja Turtles 1. And also kind of dates the time period that this was happening in because you already have CDs. So it's showing a CD in here and a tape cassette. So we have our Ninja Turtles soundtrack coming out. And here's a huge advertisement for it. This shows that it's between Turtles 1 and Turtles 2 that it was released without looking at the date. And if you look... You don't see any mentions of, like, iTunes or the Internet because this is before the Internet. Now, back to Eastman and Laird's interview. Yes, I'm jumping all around with this one. <laughs> In that interview, they talk about Ninja Turtles 2. And they mention how they're going to go for the same feel, the same um, mood as the first movie, but have more of a plot to it. Now, if you listen to my Ninja Turtles 2 review... They definitely did not keep the same mood. They lightened it up a lot. They took the weapons away. But this was not in the control of Eastman and Laird. They knew the script. And when you see a script, you don't exactly see what's going to be on the screen. So to them, it was going to be just as great, just as dark and gritty and there for the fans as the first film was. But as we saw later, Turtles 2 did not take that road at all. It lightened it up and made it cart more cartoony and uh, that's something that shows here Eastman and Lair did not know that was coming yet because they're springing up the same mood. Overall this magazine is a fun read inside and out. You can just go through there and look at the artwork and look at the different things they have to offer. I mean these comic strips are so fun you don't normally see them reprinted or 
put into any other release form. You, the only way of finding those comic strips is in these. Now, the last thing in the magazine goes to the reptile thing that they do at the last of each book. And inside this one, they cover the sea turtles. So you got your surfing turtles, according to the title of it, and a couple pictures of some sea turtles. But overall, this issue is just as great as the other ones have been. I've enjoyed it. I love being able to go through these and share them. And I'm hoping that these get out there, maybe even reprinted. Uh, I don't know who could do that. I don't know if IDW would have the power since the Archie crew and stuff worked on this, but it was released by a magazine company, not Archie. But if someone could get these reprinted, I know I I'd buy them for memory's sake, and I know a lot of fans have been asking me each time I do one of these magazine reviews, where can they get it? So, Viacom, if you're listening reprinting these old magazines call them retro on there or something because these are old articles i mean or really old articles but if you could reprint release these as something that fans can buy as a collector book or something even if it's just the interviews or the comic strips from within them it'd be nice to see them get out there i have a question for the fans out there watching cowabunga corner Anyone ever get a letter printed on the letter pages in these books? I've never met anyone who actually has. I've met people who got letters printed in the Archies and in the Mirage comics, but I've never met anyone who got their letter printed in the Ninja Turtle magazines. So if you actually got your letter printed in one of these magazines, please give us a video reply or a comment below and let us know which of the letters was yours and what it was like going through the experience of finding your letter inside a Ninja Turtle magazine with the turtle's response to you. Do you read these magazines? Have you seen what is out there for the fans? If so, tell us what your thoughts of these magazines are in video replies and comments. And let us know which one of the magazines is your favorite. Out of this magazine, which story in here is your favorite? Are you looking for the magazines? Let us know down below if somebody is actually selling them. Maybe they'll read your comment. Don't private message me on this because I don't have these for sale. But if you make a public post, maybe somebody out there still has these and is looking for somewhere to sell it. And we'd be happy to help those people find new homes for their magazines if that's the case. I can't guarantee us being able to help anyone but I'd love to see more fans get the magazine. If this is something you're looking for, let's see what we can do to help you. Please remember to check out CowabungaCorner.com where we are reviewing more turtle stuff. And I'm even reviewing certain items from my collection one by one as random items so that people can see some stuff that I just don't have time to squeeze into Cowabunga Corner. So we're going to be doing some of that on the website. We're also doing movie reviews from current movies that are out at the time. If you want to go back and read any of our stories about the turtle toys or anything else, we definitely have a lot of great things, memories, events, things that I have not covered here that's been covered in my written stories, as well as Phoenix's written stories on CowabungaCorner.com. Next week on Cowabunga Corner, we are bringing you episode 84. And to me, that represents 1984. So we are bringing you a much different episode. And episode 84, I like to read Ninja Turtles 1, the very first issue that came out on May 5th, 1984. So we'll see you next time here on Cowabunga Corner.